What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist, and I'm here with Gersh One. Today we're back at it to answer your questions in another episode of For the Greater. Yeah. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we get to those questions first. This is, that's what Gideon Ryder did. Kreider did. He says, "If the Tao Empire was as large as one of the other races, would they be able to take over?" That's a good question. Yeah, that because I think that's the one thing that holds back the Tao more than anything else. Well, eh, yeah, I'll say so, because they're such a small race that they actually have to spread the greater good to bring in more troops, more uh, planets, different resources, and that kind of thing to bolster their own agenda. Yep. Yeah, their biggest flaw is transportation. Um, the biggest flaw for the Germans during World War II was oil. The biggest flaw for um, Barney during his sing-alongs was that he was a man inside of a costume. The biggest flaw for the Tau is that they don't have a warp capable faster than light travel. Mm -hmm. uh, they've tried skimming the Immaterium and... I mean, what was it? The fourth sphere expansion? Fifth, I believe. That yeah. just messed everything up. <laughs> the Tau went crazy. They started killing their auxiliaries. There was almost a civil war between the crew and the Tau. So, yeah, it's, it was bad. And if you had, like, an empire that was huge and still, you know, uh, communicating, even if, they, even if you don't have faster than light travel, but it's just spread out all over the galaxy... Obviously, they're going to be uh, more of a powerhouse than they are now. Mm -hmm. uh, even though nowadays, I do think that they are a powerhouse. I, as much as like, we're probably going to get hate for this. I do think that the Tao Empire uh, could beat the Imperium as long as they just like you know steadily keep growing. Well, the Imperium they have themselves to blame because they did see the Tao, uh, although kind of at a primitive state, and they chose to ignore them, mm -hmm. and now they've become. In just a small amount of time, this, I wouldn't say a huge threat, but a threat nonetheless. So given that same amount of time, they're going to advance way faster and at an unparalleled rate as to the uh, Space Marines and the Imperium. Because they're almost in like a stagnant time. Um, they're very... There, there's a lot of things in the Imperium that hold them back from prospering, such as the xenophobia, the... Depression. Depression, how the High Lords are kind of only in it for themselves, and they're only going to do things that benefit themselves. So they're very separated, even though most would see the Imperium as like trying to be uh, a union, like togetherness. Yes. So the Tao, eh, I mean, they're using brain control or whatever pheromones that the Ethereals are doing, but it seems to be working. So. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that I do see... Uh, or, or an obstacle that is going to be there in the future is I think their whole drones and all like they're re rely, they are relying on technology like the humans relied on their technology mm -hmm. and then what happened was the men of iron so maybe the drones are going to have a men of iron like event where they do turn on the towel yeah. but I mean I mean their AI is uh, depending on what exactly uh unit is using that ai it, it, it it's very near sentient levels for some of it which is scary uh, yeah so it, it may be like you said a men of iron point two two point oh but i think that the tau would be smarter than that um they might have some like fail safes in place in case that does happen but yeah their whole civilization relies mm -hmm. on their technology yeah. Are we uh, already experiencing the psychic awakening for the Tau, or has that not showed up yet? No. They've been focusing more on the Sisters of Battle stuff. Mm -hmm. So hopefully next week they'll show us some Tau psychic awakening stuff. Because the only thing we got was uh, the new suit for Shadow Sun. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, which is pretty it interesting. It's like Shriek or Shrike. Yeah, Shrike. it's very similar to his pose. And it looks like she has like four arms. Like what? She has her regular arms, and then there's like another set with like fusion blasters. So that's that's an interesting, because at first I thought it was just her regular arm just holding the blaster, but it almost looks like a separate. I need to revisit that model then, or yeah, because I can't remember. Yeah, and then she has a nose now. I don't know if Tao have noses. Does she really? Well, it's it's I don't know if it's the way it's that's highlight like the highlights hit her face, but it almost looked like she has like a 
not oh. like a nose nose, but, but like a ridge. Yeah, mm. interesting. Mm. Like the Muppets, <laughs> like Gonzo. Like Gonzo. Uh, next question comes from Ralph seven seven seven. What happens if High Fleet Cronus accidentally enters inside the warp? High Fleet Cronus is the High Fleet that's specifically designed to go up against uh, demons. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think we've talked about this in, an, in a previous Greater Wa episode. Uh, we said that the Hive, no, the Shadow of the Warp, which the Cronus um, High Fleet has, because they all have it, is like a bubble. Uh, that not only keeps things in, but pushes things out. So if you throw that into, if you throw a bubble into a pool, usually it just goes bloop, bloop, and it comes back up. And I think that's what would happen because of the shadow of the warp. Um, where it, like it would, it would go into the immaterium, might stay there for a little bit, but eventually it would want to just come out because it's naturally not of that world. There's air in it and it's surrounded by water. So it's going to go. It'll make that noise too. And then it goes rawr. Hey, me asustas this. Yes. Timothy Strongarm. What do they say that the Eldar broke off into four different groups? And what happened if they are all still one people? I'm gonna redo the uh, the lore of the Eld or the fall of the Eldar. Um, but as a quick way, um, the four groups. So there was a unified Eldar. There was a faction, the majority of the faction uh, dove towards like hedonism, excess, um, basically everything that fueled Slaanesh's birth. Uh, they, the, the Eldar got to a point where they didn't have to work and just food was naturally like provided for them. Uh, so they were like the cream of the crop, uh, like young jock. Uh, <laughs> and then... Yeah. So the hedonists, um, yeah, because it's like when you have it's like that pyramid of like you have to have shelter, food, um, was it like compassion or something like that? Yeah, and they had it all, mm -hmm. and then they they like went over towards like weird things, like to the point where they were hurting each other just to feel something, mm -hmm. just to feel that they're alive, and then there was a group that splintered off from that, who were more like the. You call it what are the like the Amish, where they wanted to live very primitive lives. Those became the Exodites. Mm -hmm. uh, there was also um, the Craft World Eldar, uh, which were more of like they didn't. It's not that they they didn't take part in the hedonism. I think they were more interested in like still expanding their their empire, and they they that's why they took those ships and they explored like other areas. Uh, those became the craft world Eldar. Um, and then the last one was the Harlequins. Yeah, Harlequins. I mean, they, they've they always had their culture. Um, well, Here. more so because once Slanesh was birthed, then the new uh, plays and the dances and stuff like that came. Yeah. So those are the four factions. So it was the the hedonists, which were the Dark, Dark Eldar. Eldar yeah. The ones that believed in the laughing god. And just because he's... Because Segra continued... They, that, that faction continued in the Exodites and then the Craft World. Mm -hmm. And now you have... The Inari. Yep, which is all four. Right. Um, and they are bound together because there's a new god, Inied, mm -hmm. that has been birthed. birthed. <laughs> and uh, supposedly this is going to be their, uh, their one hope, their chance at being brought to the glory of days past. And we just have to remind ourselves that that came before... The Primaris Marines and even Gilliman, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and how much lore have we gotten from that? That's about it. <laughs> yeah. This one's by Din Tran. Would Windex and Lysol actually hurt or slow down a Nurgling? I mean, he's dirty. Yeah, but they also don't feel pain. True. So, like, if you have a cut and you spray Win Windex on it, it's going to burn. I'm assuming. I've never done it. Maybe I should try. I uh, just get paper cuts in between my fingers and then just put Windex on there. But if if I'm a Nurgle worshiper, that's I'm not gonna I don't feel pain and I'm not gonna die, so maybe it won't work. Just a bolter, a bolter would probably work. <laughs> well, that's because it's gonna blow them up. Blow them up. Blah, 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 blow. Next question comes from Erisa Swan. What do you What do you recommend for 40k books to read? To be honest, 
I can't, like, I don't really like uh, 40K books, uh, like from the Black Library, because they, they spend too much time on one little thing. Like, I really like the Codex, because the Codex gives you a broad, like, quick explanation of, of a battle, whereas, like, a book is going to tell you how Gilliman, um, how he killed this guy and then moved on to the next guy and what the room looked like. And that. it's just information you don't really need. It's, yeah. I mean, but I'd say if you want to dive into the books, go straight into the heresy. Start from the first book and just move on because that'll get you a better know-how, like the details. Because we all know how the heresy went. Um, they got to Terra. They fought, obviously... Sanguinius fell, Dorne was uh, pretty effed up, <laughs> and uh, the Emperor killed Horus. But there's so much that led to these events, so many um, fill-in-the-blanks, so to speak, that I'd really say start with the heresy. Uh, you do get these epic battles, but at the same time you also focus on the details, the interpersonal uh, communications, the bonds that are made between space marines, the bonds that are then broken after it you have like half of a chapter or half of a legion at that time go to chaos the other half stayed loyal and how these bonds were broken formed changed etc so you're really adding a lot more fluff to the main core events of 40k mm -hmm. yes or if you have a favorite primark we'll start with those books uh, this one is by din tran once again is a rift to the 40k universe opened which race or army do you think our world can stand a chance against? Not the Tyranids, not the Orcs. Um, Imperial Guard. It's the same thing as well, no, because there's like billions of them. Well, so if you take the it's military, just endless? well, they're saying if like a whole faction came out. Oh, just the whole faction. Because yeah, that's like saying you have one world, Earth, going up against. All the imperial worlds, the galaxy, that, yeah, <laughs> that have an imperial guard regiment. So I don't think anything really. Maybe a craft world, because a craft world is supposed to be as big as a planet, right? But again, they're like super advanced. Um, I think there's some stories that like certain Eldar are so fast our eyes can't see them. Yep. So like, just have a whole bunch of banshees just like come in and like in a blink of an eye, that's it. Yeah. So no, none of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> a rogue trader faction, maybe? I don't know. But uh, do do world, world do rogue traders have, like... Uh, Their own personal armies? Well, not just that, but do they have, like, cyclonic torpedoes and stuff like that? They do. So then they can just blow up. <laughs> they, yeah, they have a fleet. Yeah. Uh, or they can they can have fleets. Can have fleets, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we're just screwed. Either yeah, no, way. No matter what. A single uh, warp vampire. And that's it. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> Next question comes from... Ooh, this is interesting. Another one by Din Tran. Which 40k character do you think would be a good bartender? Hmm, that's a really good question. Because um, I feel like you really have to think about like the origins of that character and mm -hmm. like what things would be on that planet to make that drink. Well, as a bartender, I think you need like skills... Like, you just need to be able to impress. And I think, like, any Eldar would be able to impress a human just because we just talked about how fast they are. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes you can't even see them, so they would even have to slow themselves down. Uh, and I don't know if you've ever been to, like, a, a bar where, like, the bartender is doing the whole thing with, like, the um, shaker cups where he throws them in the air and then the water or the drink goes up and then he catches the, the drink in, like, a swoopy thing. And <laughs> then on swoopy thing? And, and then on top of that... Um, the fact that they have psychic powers so they can like trick your mind into believing something that isn't there. So that, I think an Eldar, any Eldar. Especially if it's like a warp spider. They'll just be like teleporting all <laughs> over the place. Yeah. yeah. That'd be cool. What about you? Probably like a demon of Zeech. Because they could just make you see whatever <laughs> you want to see. And, and like a regular cocktail drink would probably taste like ecstasy to like tenfold. Mm-hmm. Like, like you took ecstasy, cocaine, and made love with a hundred of your choosing. Because, you know, it's 2020. Bridget B. A <laughs> hundred Bridget Bs. Yeah. That's like a whole swarm. A swarm of Bridget... Yeah, that actually sounds kind of cool. <laughs> uh, 
next question. This will be the last question. Uh, I have one from Pineapple. What do you think happened to Captain Typhus? Titus. Titus from the Space Marine game. And what do you think uh, caused his warp resistance? Also, first. Also, first, somehow. Hey, congrats. So, yeah, Captain Titus was, I guess you could say the main character. Yeah, because you play as him. The main character for the PlayStation 3 uh, video game, Space Marine. A very, very generic title. Um, but yeah, this guy is like, you're playing him, so obviously he's like the boss of the bosses, like nothing can take him down. He's going through like hordes of orcs, demons, um, I guess greater possessed demons and whatnot, and nothing's touching him. I kind of don't want to spoil the ending, but there could easily be a Space Marine too. There probably will be at some point. I really hope so because uh, that was one probably one of the more enjoyable experiences that I remember playing a Space Marine video game. I mean, yeah, you've got the Dawn of War series, you've got the mobile games, um, but this one was pretty cool because it was almost like a God of War esque title, and you really see the like, the, like I feel like they really did capture well what it would be like to be invading or trying to protect a Forge world that's been invaded by orcs. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, play it. If you haven't played it, go watch videos of it. It's really cool. It's probably super like dirt cheap now since it came out. Excuse me for the PlayStation 3. But yeah, definitely there should be a Space Marine 2. And those were the questions for today. If we didn't get to your question, ask again and we will try our best to get to the next question. Uh, to your question. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks for everything, guys. Yeah, this has been the Sound Alchemist. Gershwan. And we are out of here. <laughs>